Let's take a look at this code. It's been a while since I taught this class, so I, I had to remind myself what, what we were doing with this code, so it's interesting. Take a look at this, take a look at this program, actually. It, it, it actually gives you some insight into Go's um, strong type system. So I've got this named user-defined type called example with what we've been doing, doing before, right? And I went ahead and using the same exact same exact struct layout, I'm defining E to be not the name type, but this literal type, and I construct it with some values. All right. Now, I go ahead on line 33 and I construct a value of type example. There it is, uh, of type example EX. Okay, And then I assign E to EX, and your brain says, well, Bill, of course I can assign E to EX because they, they have the same exact memory layout. I mean, they're literally the same. So the compiler should allow that. OK, well, let's do something here for a second, which gets interesting. Let's call this, I don't know, I'm going to call this Bill, and I'm going to call this Eric for a second. All right, so I've got two name types right now with the same exact structure. We agree with that. Okay, they're identical in, in, in everything field name and memory layouts, everything. All right, now let's define Bill. Let's define Eric. There we are, same, good. Now, if I try to assign Eric to Bill, look at what happens here. What happens here is, oh, I can't use E, so let's use ER and BI so we have a cleaner message. Look at what the compiler is saying here. It's saying I cannot use Eric in this assignment to Bill. Can't do it. No, nope, not allowed to do it at all, OK? Question is, why is the compiler complaining about ER but doesn't complain about E? Right, what is the difference between E? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hacking here on the fly, and the compiler just doesn't. Are you done with that? Thank you. Why is the compiler? having no problem assigning E to BI, but has lots of problems with assigning ER to BI. OK. The big difference, again, is in the type system in Go. Once some variable is based on a named type, then Go is only going to allow the assignment to happen if those variables are of the same named type. But E is not based on a named type. What is E based on? A literal type. And now Go says, well, you didn't lock this variable into something that was named. You've kind of defined this on the fly. It's literal. So if the memory layouts are the same, then I'm going to allow this copy to take place. Now. We know, however, that Eric and BI have the same memory model. So we know that the assignment is safe. We know copying the data would be safe. But if you notice here on line 44, Go is performing an implicit conversion of E to BI because it's not named. But it's not doing an implicit conversion of ER to BI because ER is named. In other words, if I want the assignment to go through, Go says, then you must explicitly tell me this is what you want. It's not enough for you and the compiler to know that the assignment is safe in terms of the amount of memory that we're moving. You have to be explicit. Now, you might be saying, Bill, seriously, why are we doing this? Let me give you a more practical example. OK, and why we're doing this.
Let's do it this way. Let's look at these two variables. On line 47, I1 is a signed int, isn't it? This is a signed integer. This one is an unsigned integer. They both occupy the same amount of memory here, which is 8 bytes of memory. All right? 8 bytes of memory, which would arguably mean that the copy should be safe because you're taking the 8 bytes from this side and you're copying it into the 8 bytes on this side. And in lots of compilers, like the C programming language, it would have no problem doing the implicit conversion. Except, what do we know about unsigned and signed integers? That when you deal with a signed int, that last bit position out of the 64 bits that are there, only 63 of them are used for data. One of those bits is used for what? Plus and minus. When it comes to an unsigned int, all 64 bits represent data. So even though the assignment is clean in terms of an 8-byte copy, the data gets completely mangled because we're losing all 64 bits of data precision. Precision is going down to 63. And you're saying plus or minus. It ends up becoming a negative number. Do you know how many bugs have shown up in spacecrafts at NASA because of this implicit type of conversion that a developer didn't even know they were doing because they thought they were always working with signed integers and somebody slipped an unsigned int. And now you don't catch it until it's too late. And so what Go again is trying to say here is, look, look, I know that it could arguably be safe, but these are two different types, which means that if I allow the assignment the data can be, can be mangled. So if you want it to happen, we're not going to do that implicit conversion. You have to be explicit, OK? You have to be explicit. So just remember that, OK? Um, it's complaining that I haven't put this in some sort of print statement. So just remember, the compiler is not going to do implicit conversions when the variables are based on name types. It's going to assume that bad things can happen. So if you want the assignments to happen, you have to be explicit to the compiler and say, no, 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 dude, it's OK, it's, it's good. But if the values are based on non-name types, literal types, compiler will take that implicit liberty. Thank you.